Hi friends, welcome back to my zone, Active Kids. I'm Liberty, and we are so happy that you joined us today in my zone, Active Kids, where we actively invest in your future. Who's helping on your favorite church day? Hi guys, my name is Ivana Piekus in Liberty. What is our theme for this week? This week we're learning all about occupation. Occupation, wow, that's a big word. What does it mean? That's about your job. Today we're learning all about a baker. We also want you to remember that you can see us every <coughs> day of the week, Monday to Friday at 9. You can join us at My Zone, at My Zone and Zossi Facebook page. Now it's song time. We're going to sing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Okay. Now it's time to go see the coolest people we know, Zoe and Zaki. Hello, 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 how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm great, I'm great, I'm wonderful, hooray! Hello, 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 how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm great, I'm great, I'm wonderful, hooray! Hi friends, wow, I miss you so, so much. My name is Zaki and I love eating pancakes with cereal. Um, hi, beautiful friends. My name is Zoe, and I love how when we bake, we get to create magical things. And, and we, we are niece and nephew. nephew. This week, we are learning all about occupation. Zaki, that is a big word. What does it mean? An occupation is the job you do. Oh, <coughs> and what are we learning about today? Today, we are learning more about being a baker. Oh, what is a baker? A baker is someone who usually makes things like bread and buns. And cakes? Yes, some bakers also make cake, cakes and desserts as well. Do you know what things they use to make the bread and cakes are called? Um, it's called ingredients. Exactly, ingredients, the things we use to make bread and buns and more. That can be eggs. And flour. Sometimes oil. And milk and sugar and salt. Sometimes we use yeast, which is something we use to make the bread fluffy, um, almost like little clouds. But Zoe, when you are a baker, you also need things like spoons. And measuring cups. And mixers and bowls and pans for when you make mix in all the on on ah in all the ingredients bakers teach us to be patient but also to be creative they also teach us that sometimes we need to listen to the rules which is our recipes because then what we bake turns out perfect but sometimes we need to think outside the box and add new things in so it can be something new and exciting i think it's time for us to sing a super fun song about baking now Get ready friends, and a one, and a two, and a one, two, three. Better cake, better cake, baker's man. 
Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Bat it and roll it and make it with a pea. Put it in the oven for baby and me. Bat a cake, bat a cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Mix it and stir it and bake it with a gelatin. Good from the first till the very last bite. Bat a cake, bat a cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Make it with chocolate and milk it with cream. Make it with perfume. as if you've ever seen. I, I had so much fun learning about baking and breakers. Now it's time for f your fun facts again. Did you know that pl the places where bakers sell their stuff is called a bakery? And some bakeries have been around for 100 of years. I love all your fun facts, Zaki. Friends, remember you should always say thank you to the bakers who make the most yummiest things in the world. But that is for us for today. We will see you again tomorrow. Bye! Bye. Wow, Zach and so it was so much fun, but now it's time for us to have some fun. We are going to be t pretend that we are bakers and yeah. This is our ingredient, so we're going to squat down and pick up one ingredient and then squat down and stand up and then squat down again and put it down on our right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here we go. Okay. okay. <coughs> one. <coughs> Two, three, four, and now we are done. Now it's time for us, our online school. It's going to be grade two, week 11, lesson two. Welcome to my zone online school. My name is teacher Mutsa. Get your education booklet in our daily newspaper, street sales, or at your school every Monday to Thursday for pre-primary up until grade three. The lessons are for listening or watching online. Inside the newspapers, there's an insert of the lesson booklet. Please cut the top of the lesson booklet with a pair of scissors and fold it for ready to use. But there is more. We are also available on our online platforms, MyZone and Zoshi Facebook pages and in addition, our website, Zoshi Online. And welcome to my zone online school my name is teacher Mutsa and thank you so much for joining me today our theme this week is local businesses and autumn and before we get into any lessons boys and girls we need to sanitize remember when you sanitize you are trying to stay far away from coronavirus so make sure that both hands are sanitized nicely. Make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else. For today's lesson, we will be talking about syllables, decomposition, and money. For our next exercise, for the first one today, actually, <laughs> let's turn to page six. On page six, we are going to have some syllable work. Now, it is going to be our job to make sure that we find the syllables for each of these words. Let's read the words first. We have mother, 
shampoo, vegetables, milk, chicken, groceries, soap, checkers, rice, bread, Van Hill, shopping. These are our words that we are going to have to clap and count the syllables. So we're going to be doing some breaking down of the words. They have given you an example. The example is the word toothpaste. And they say that it is two counts. So let us clap two counts, trying to say the word toothpaste. Are you ready? Let's go. Toothpaste. Toothpaste. Yes, it's correct. So that means it's two counts. Toothpaste. Toothpaste. Very good. Now I'm going to help you with some of the words as well. So we have the words shampoo, milk, and groceries. So we want to find out how many claps we're going to say for each of them. Let's start with the first one, shampoo. Are you ready? Let us clap. Shampoo. 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 Now when we say the word shampoo, how many times are we clapping? Let's try one more time. Shampoo. That sounds like two claps. Shampoo. So I'm going to write the number two. I'd like you to please also write the number two. The next one is the word milk. Let us also try and count how many we need for that. Are you ready? Let's go. Milk. 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 How many claps or syllables do we have in the word milk? Let's try again. Milk. That sounds like one. So I'm going to write the number one. If you got that one right, well done. Good job. Now we have groceries. Oh, that sounds like a long one, but let's try and figure it out together. Let's put our hands ready for clapping. And we are going to say groceries. 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 Now, how many syllables are in the word groceries? Let's try and clap them again. Groceries. That sounded like three. Groceries. So we are going to write the number three. Now the rest you're going to do by yourselves by filling in the box below. You write the name of the word and then you count and then you write the number of counts or syllables that you heard. Take your time with this one. Make sure you write neatly in the boxes and count by clapping carefully. I will see you soon after the advert break. Do you have children in the age range of 5 to 6 years and want to participate in our school booklet program? Please contact us on 081 74 3759 and we will put you on our distribution list for the attention of pre-primary schools. Topics include family, summer, culture, traditions and houses, transport and communications, occupations, autumn and more. We distribute countrywide in over seven different languages. For our exercise now, boys and girls, let's turn to page 7. On page 7, we are going to be decomposing. Now, when we decompose, we are going to be decomposing into tens and units. Now, as you can see, the example shows that we have already had them split up. Because our answer is 13, we have put aside the tens and the units. So that means 
it will say 13 equals 10 plus 3. Now we're going to do B together. B says 54 equals dash plus dash. So that's the one we're going to do together. So let's take a look at the board. I have said 54 equals dash plus dash, the same in your book. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark my tens, which is on top of my five, and then mark my unit, which is on top of my four. So now I have my tens and my units. So I'm going to start with my tens. Now it looks like I have five tens, which makes our number 50. Remember, tens is friends with any numbers from the number 10 to the number 99. And in this case, our 10 has a five, but five cannot sit alone for tens. Instead, it needs a zero. So it says 50. And then for Mrs. Units, we have a four. So we're going to just take that four and put it in its right place. Now our answer says 54 equals 50 plus four. Remember, it's also easy to find your answer if you say it out loud. Because we are saying 54, it's the same as saying 54. So when you say your answer out loud, you'll be able to know that, okay, I need to put the tens by themselves and the units by themselves. So now we have 54. I'd like you to please take your time with this exercise. Say it out loud so that you can help yourself know which ones are for the tens and which ones are for the units. Take your time and when you're done, you can go to page eight. On page eight, we are going to be dealing with money. Now this time, we want to put a price tag on the items and we are going to be purchasing them by coloring the coins you will need to buy each item. Now each item, as you can see, has been given how much they cost, which is the price tag. It is our job to go into our wallets and retrieve the money necessary. Not too much, not too little, but just the right amount of money. So for the first one they have shown you, for the example, is 75 cents for the pencil. If you go into the wallet, you have to take out 75 cents. So let me show you how we can do this together. Now, if you're dealing with the cents, your decade numbers are going to help you very easily. I need 75 cents. So instead of trying to get the small five cent coins, we can start with a big one, 50 cents, like how they did. So, so far I have 50 and then I need to get to 75. So I need a 10. So 50 cents and now I have 60 cents and then I need to get to 75 remember so far we are on 60 that's not enough so we need to go for another 10 cent coin so we have 50 cents 60 cents 70 cents but I need 75 cents now this is where I take my five cent coin and now I have enough to buy the pencil. So that's how much money I need for the pencil. I have 50 cents, 10 cents, another 10 cents and five cents. So when you are counting, count carefully, make sure you continue to go back to the price tag to see how much you need. Take your time and be careful because some of them are going to be dollars. So you need to keep your eyes open on how many dollars you need and how many cents you're going to need. I will see you soon after the advert break.
Follow us on My Zone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. We have now come to the end of our lesson, boys and girls, and I hope you had so much fun. Remember, if you're not sure or you don't know, that's okay, you can always ask for help. Just make sure that you finish your exercise by yourself. So now that we are done, we need to sanitize. So let's take our sanitizer and rub our hands thoroughly. Remember, if you don't have sanitizer, you can always use soap and water. Make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else. My friend Sashi was supposed to come and visit us today. I wonder where he is. Sashi. Hello, Sashi. So, from Sashi and I, we would like to say thank you for joining us today. And goodbye. Our online school will help you along the way. Find us at www.zoshi.online and download the booklet. Follow us on Facebook to never miss a video. Subscribe to our Zoshi Telegram channel if you want to receive daily updates. Proudly sponsored by the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture, Namibian Community Trust, UNICEF, My Zone Online School, Amos Meerkat Syllabus and Capricorn Foundation. Wow, what a great lesson we had. Now it's time for grade 3, week 11, lesson 2. Welcome to My Zone Online School. My name is Teacher Mutsa. Get your education booklet in our daily newspaper, Street Sales, or at your school every Monday to Thursday for pre-primary up until grade 3. The lessons are for listening or watching online. Inside the newspapers, there is an insert of the lesson booklet. Please cut the top of the lesson booklet with a pair of scissors and fold it for ready to use. But there is more. We are also available on our online platforms, MyZone and Zoshi Facebook pages, and in addition, our website, Zoshi Online. everyone and welcome to my zone online school my name is teacher Mutsa and thank you so much for joining me today our theme this week is occupations and autumn and before we get into any lessons boys and girls we need to sanitize so please take your sanitizer and rub your hands thoroughly Remember, boys and girls, sanitizer makes sure that we stay far away from germs. So let's try and sanitize as much as possible. Make sure your hands are dry before you touch anything else. For today's lesson, we will be talking about prepositions, syllables, and plural nouns. Now for our exercise, boys and girls, let's turn to page six. On page six, we are going to be doing prepositions. Now, prepositions are very fun to do and they are easy to understand. The first thing you need to know is what are the prepositions? Remember, a preposition is a word that tells us where something is. In the box beside, we are given different prepositions. 
Now we're going to try and put these three prepositions in sentences using our friend here, Mr. Lion. Mr. Lion is going to show us what the preposition actually shows. Remember, we are trying to find out where something is. So, Mr. Lion, can you show us where the word in would be? He says, the lion is in the bowl. In the bowl. Well done. Mr. Lion, what about on? Let's see. The lion is on the table. On the table. Well done. What about Mr. Lion under? The lion is under the table. Under the table. Good job. What about near? The lion is near the table. Near the table. Well done. What about beside? The lion is beside the chair. Beside the chair. Good job. Then we have between. The lion is between the sweets and the toy. The sweets and the toy. And then we have behind. The lion is behind the chair. Behind. Behind the chair. Very good. Then we have in front of. The lion is in front of the teacher in front of the teacher. And those are our prepositions. Now we're going to use the same ones to try and fill in the missing word in the sentences. Let's take a look at our exercise. So number one, up to number 16, we are going to be using the picture that we can see next to the box of prepositions. Now that picture is what we're going to be looking at, just like how we were taking a look at Mr. Lion. Let's take a look at number one. It says, the picnic basket is dash the rug. The picnic basket is dash the rug. Now you need to look for the picnic basket and you need to decide where it is is it in the rug, on the rug, under the rug? I'd like you to put your answer. So you are going to do all of these by yourselves. Read each question twice and then answer it using any of the prepositions in the box. Please take a good look at the picture and that will help you understand where the item is. Take your time and when you are done, please can you go to page 7. On page 7, we are going to be talking about syllables. Everyone, let's say syllables. Syllables. Now, syllables are the sounds a word makes. The word phone has one syllable. Phone. Phone. But the word computer has three syllables. Computer. Computer. Sing the words in the box. Write them under the correct number of syllables and then write a sentence using one word from each of the columns. Now we can see that we have our words in the box. 
Let's read them together. We have the words earth, earth, reuse, reuse, trash, trash, energy, energy, glass, glass, sun, sun, recycle, recycle, reduce, reduce, paper, paper, plastic, plastic, Gasoline, gasoline, animal, animal. Well done, everyone. Now, the trick with the syllables is to make sure that when you say them, you clap your hands. That way, when you clap your hands, you know that you are saying the syllable the way it is in time with your clap. So that you can also count how many they are. Remember, we are looking for syllables that have one, or, two, or, three. Put them correct in the correct bin box and when you're done, you're going to make sentences. One sentence for one syllable, one sentence for two syllables, and one sentence for three syllables. Have fun with this one. Take your time with both exercises, and I'll see you soon after the advert break. Follow us on My Zone Facebook Active Kids to watch your daily lesson and other fun activities with Zoe and Zoshi. For our exercise now, boys and girls, let's go to page eight. On page eight, we are going to be doing irregular plural nouns. Now, before we answer any of the questions, we need to remind ourselves about certain words. So let's take a look at the board. The first thing that you're going to notice at the board on the top, I have said singular means one. So when something is alone or something is only one, we say it is singular. Then we definitely know what a noun is. A noun is the name of a place, thing, or person. So we have singular nouns where it's only one thing. But when they become two or more, we become or we say they become plural nouns. Now, plural means two or more. And then with the irregular plural nouns, we are talking about nouns that have no patterns. We don't have a rule for them and there are no patterns that we can follow for the noun. We know that if we have it as many, it has a different kind of setting. Unlike the other nouns where we say we add s or es, the irregular noun has no actual pattern. So we are now going to do irregular plural nouns. So let us take a look at the last two, nine and ten. Number nine says, let's read them together. We saw five dash at the petting zoo. We saw five dash at the petting zoo. 
So the first thing that you're going to notice about this sentence is that it has the word five. Now, if there are five and not one, that means it is a plural noun we are looking for. And because it is irregular plural nouns, we have the word sheep and sheeps. Now, when it comes to these words, I can tell you that even if it is one sheep, we say sheep. And in this case, even if they are five, we say five sheep. We do not say sheeps. So our sentence will now read, we saw five sheep at the petting zoo. So the word we're going to put on the blank space is sheep. Sheep. Well done. Now let's do number 10. Number 10 says, the pond was full of different dash. The pond was full of different dash. Now when something is full of something, that means there's definitely more than one. So we know that we are dealing with a plural. But because it is a plural noun, we need to find the irregular one. We have the words fish and fishes. Fish and fishes. The word we will be using there is the word fish. Fish. That is because if there's more than one fish, the word will still remain fish if we have two or more. So our sentence will now say, the pond was full of different fish. So like I said before, irregular plural nouns have no pattern. Some are spelt differently, some stay the same, and then others is a different word altogether. It is just depending on the plural relating to the singular. So I would like you to please try very hard to find your irregular plural nouns. Take your time, read your sentences three times and then try and write the correct one. But before you do, say both of them and see which one is correct. I'll see you soon after our advert break. Do you have children in the age range of five to six years and want to participate in our school booklet program? Please contact us on 81 and we will put you on our distribution list for the attention of pre-primary schools. Topics include family, summer, culture, traditions and houses, transport and communications, occupations, autumn and more. We distribute countrywide in over seven different languages. We have now come to the end of our lesson, boys and girls, and I hope that you had fun. Remember, if you're not sure or you don't know, you can always ask an adult for help. Just make sure that you finish the exercises by yourself. So now we are done with our lesson, it's very important for us to sanitize. Make sure that you make sanitizing a regular thing. But if you do not have sanitizer all the time, you can wash your hands with soap and water as well. I wonder, I've not seen Sashi in a long time. Maybe he's outside. Oh, <laughs> there he is. Hello, Sashi. So, so from Sashi and I, we would like to say thank you for joining us today and goodbye. Our online school will help you along the way. Find us at www.zoshi.online and download the booklet. Follow us on Facebook to never miss a video. Subscribe to our Zoshi Telegram channel if you want to receive daily updates. Proudly sponsored by the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture, Namibian Community Trust, UNICEF, 
My Zone Online School, am Musmir Cat Syllabus and Capricorn Foundation. What a great day full of fun. I really had the best time. We'll see you guys again tomorrow for more fun. Bye.